Join us, MrTruck.com, for truck reviews, trade reviews, and accessory reviews. I've been using rock tamers for years. You know, that's you got these pretty traders with stainless steel noses with boats with all the gel coat on them. And it's those little rocks going down the highway 70 miles an hour, those little tiny pebbles that mark that trader off and hurt your resale value and ruin a boat. So rock tamers figured this out. They have ribs on the back so they don't sail. They actually stay put and then they'll fit three different size yokes. Here's the big one. That's a three inch. You got a one and a half or a two and a half on here. And they also make a two inch. Now that's will fit about anything. You only need one inch of room behind your coupler, behind your, your adjustable coupler or your straight coupler to make them fit. So then if you want to take them off, all you do is pull the pin and slide the whole thing off because you know the can cost you some fuel mileage when you're not pulling a trailer. So they're made to use with a trailer. Very adjustable. You make them long enough for duels, short enough for single rear wheel, and they're very well made. And the hardware is very adjustable. These yokes will actually swing up or down depending on where you need to adjust them. The bolts on the bottom is how you set them. They're really tight. And that's how you, it's got a lock nut on it. And these, there's three adjustment links on these, plus you can move them in a ways. So you're adjustable like all over the place. They'll fit anything. And this way, you can save your nose of your trader. And it actually will definitely help you preserve all that money you've got wrapped up in traders. I have six test traders. And I get new traders all the time. So I have to be very careful what I do to the trailers. And these will do it. Rock tamers. They're in Colorado. We've got this big dually Chevy Silverado and we're going to measure it so I get the mud flaps cut off the right length. They come ready to go, but you got to cut off the length of your truck. And this one here, if I measure up to the top of that, that's nine, that's 18 inches to the top of the hitch. What is 18 inches out here? Okay. So we're gonna put a yoke in the middle. That's how all this works. Mud flaps on each side of the yoke. So you got about 18 inches. I'm gonna show you on Rock Tamer how this thing all goes together. This is the main piece. This is called the yoke. And this is what decides whatever size of hitch you have. This is a two inch, like what I would use. Now on a dually like this, you need a two and a half, sometimes a three. So we got all three different sizes of the yokes, two, two and a half, and three. And this one, <laughs> right here in the middle of nowhere, trying to do this, so he's got a sleeve in here. So we're actually gonna sleeve this hitch, and all you need is one inch for the yoke, one inch across there between your hitch and your receiver to make these work. And most hitches come with two holes, so you usually you're good. But we've got, <laughs> we had a cheap hitch, so I'm gonna throw that away. And now we're gonna try to use the reducer and my two inch shank that's what this is on this adjustable Gen Y hitch. So this is a two inch receiver hitch from Gen Y. And this is what we're going to use on the adapter for this moment. And later on, we're going to put it all on a two and a half inch receiver hitch to go into a two inch on the truck or two and a half inch on the truck. So this will work out. But right now we're going to put all this stuff on the receiver hitch. Okay. And that's, in this case, that's how we're going to do it because we're trying to use the sleeve too. And now, all I have to do is line it up with the receiver hitch and then put a pin in it. And there you go. Now I will tighten up the bottom bolts on this yoke you see toward the bottom. There's two bolts, one on each side. That tightens it all up wherever you're going to set it. So I'm going to do that, tighten that up in place. This is mostly about how you install it. We'll talk about the wonderful advantages of rock tamers. But now we're installing it. Now we've measured from the hitch to the ground on this dually with a load on it. The, tip, the, most, the biggest load they have. And what's cool about this is these are adjustable. You can see these moving up and down. And that will allow you to give you a little adjustment on how tall the mud flap is which is really cool because this is so adjustable. It'll, it's, it'll adjust in and out for the, the width of your truck, whether it's dually or a single rear wheel, or you can adjust it up and down somewhat. You want to get as close as you can so you don't have to sit these arms up and down too much. 
but very adjustable hitch. Now that's the first part, putting the yoke on. We've got that done, we've got more than an inch of clearance. Everything's fitting. So now we're gonna work on the mud flaps. Don't go away, Mr. Chuck.TV, we'll be right back. Now, in the, the top of the yoke is the arms, the arms that hold on the mud flap. So I'm gonna stick this one in here because I wanna do some really accurate measurements before I cut the mud flaps. Because these mud flaps, they're made to fit all different heights of trucks, so you gotta cut them to fit yours. And I'll show you how well, it's so designed, so easy to do that. But now I put that in there, that's your main arm. And I'll take the mud flap and where'd measure my tape measure? Now when I measured this truck empty, it was 19 inches to the top of the receiver. And then you got another five inches in the arm. So I was coming up with some number of, of 19, which seems like a lot. So now I'm actually gonna put them on there and see where that would be. And it's a little different. I don't really want these dragging, but I don't want them dragging when the trailer's loaded because you'd be knocking more dust on it. So according to my calculations, I need to come up 14 inches. And this thing only dropped, it dropped less than an inch with that trailer on there, which is very, very good for a living quarters horse trailer. So it looks to me like where we wanna be is on the one, I'm looking down here, one, two, three, fourth hole is where I wanna be which means the cut line will be right below this hole, right there is the cut line. And I'll show you how that works. It's one, two, three, four. So right above four is where we're gonna cut the mud flaps. Now see, my calculation was 19 inches. So I'm measuring now here, and I said the top of the fourth hole, which is right there, which is 19. It's like a half inch off. So that's pretty accurate. So my calculations, my measurements are pretty darn close. You can see the holes, and it comes with a tool to punch, finish punching the holes out. The top one's punched out. Now you gotta punch out the one you want. And see the fourth hole, this one, there's a cut line right there. I don't know if you can get zoom in and see that, but that is where you're gonna be cutting. You're gonna use your knife or your uh, tile cutter, whatever you got, to cut it right on that cut line, which I think is really awesome. It makes it so easy for you. And these ribs that are on here, this is what makes it stiff. It makes it so it doesn't fly straight back. They used to use a weight in the bottom and they had problems with that rusting through the rubber. So now they use these ribs. These ribs are what holds it in place. That's the back side. So don't put them on backwards. And here's the front side, or the, the side you'll see from the back of the truck. And it has a nice little stainless steel plate that goes across the bottom. Okay, so we're just putting this on a block of wood and this cool tool that comes with it, this is a punch, it punches holes. So we said four, right? One, two, three, four. So I'm gonna go above number four with my hammer and beat the tar out of it. I hear wood, when you hear wood you quit. And there's that hole. I'm gonna go over here, one, two, three, four. You guys are counting with me, just like Sesame Street. And this punch is so cool. I just punched another hole in until I heard the wood, and then I got that done. Now all I got to do is get it out of the hole. And you see, the hole went clear through, and now I got to cut on that line. And then this one will be ready to put on the on the truck. Show me the line you're going to cut. Right there, right there. It's number two, three, four. We counted that 19 inches. That's the cut line. You see it on each rib has a cut line. So you only have to connect one little spot in there. Usually I use a carpenter square, but I didn't bring it. Okay, now to cut these lines. If I don't cut my finger off, you always gotta be careful. This is a new blade, so that should give me a better fighting chance. My fingers are probably in the way for the cameraman. Nope. Fine. Cool. 
And you can see how it separates that cut line. It's really important. They did all this so you would not have to spend all day doing this unless you're doing an install article and you're still going to take all day. Just cut across the ribs right on the cut line. Okay, now I gotta finish punching holes. I did the end ones, now I gotta do the middle ones. Well, that didn't go all the way through. Now the next thing that goes on is these. This is what holds the mud flap onto the pipe. And you guys see what I'm doing? You got round holes on one side and square holes on the other. So I gotta figure out which way the bolts go. Since they got warning labels on this side, I'm gonna assume this is the outside. Otherwise you'd have to climb under your truck to make sure you were safe. <laughs> okay. Man, there's a lot of stuff in here. I didn't remember half of these things. Now I may have to read the manual. Just because we're coming to an impasse. You notice I push this arm down, make sure the end with the bolt through it and the little rubber cap is on the inside. So you shove that through there, and then that's your adjustment, however length you want it. And now you have this end here open. And there's a little plastic cap that covers that up after you slide on your mud flap, after you have it bolted on. There's only one hole goes through the top. And if you see this hole here, the small one, these go through the mud flap. Yep. And this top one goes through the pipe. That holds it where you want in the pipe. Oh. There's three adjustments. Right there is for a narrower truck. You see that hole lines up with that hole. Once you be able to see them both. That's for a wider truck. And for a dually, it goes clear out there. So that goes past the tires. I don't know if you can see the picture of the dually above it or below it. But that was where you would adjustment for a dually. That actually goes to the outside of the tire, which is really where you want it. So anyway, so it's got three adjustments. Okay. Now we're talking about putting this clear out to here for a dually, but if you think that's sticking too far out, you don't necessarily have to move that bolt. Move the bolt hole, you can just slide this whole thing in, at least halfway in, if that's a better adjustment. So that gives you actually four adjustments for where you want to put that. You can slide this out or you can slide this in. Isn't that cool? They're really adjustable mud flaps. Okay, we got our mud flaps drilled out. Now we're going to attach them to the arms that slide on the pipe and your carriage bolts. So they'll go in the bottom side. It's a square hole, so you don't have to put two wrenches on. You can do all this with one wrench. And we're going to use a washer and a lock nut. And we'll do that five times. And now the really cool Rock Tamer stainless steel piece goes on the bottom. Boy, it has a lot of paper. And so now we'll flip this puppy over to this side. And then the rock tamers will fit in this indention. Rock tamer, isn't that beautiful? This is so cool. That's where that'll go. But before I put that on there, I'm going to shove the spacers through the holes. Spacer, spacer, there they are. And they just push in. And we do that, however many this is. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, I think we can build it now. now wa yeah, watch this, and I'm gonna put, put the spacer in. And I'll show you, and I'll put in two of these. Those go on top. The nut goes through it. And the bottom side would be a washer and a lock washer. Right there you can see it. A washer and a lock washer. And lock nut. Okay. 
And you just do that all across the board and you're good. Uh, well, we got everything bolted together on this one mud flap, and now we're going to flip it over and tighten the nuts up. It's all attached, and there's the nuts, and we're going to start cranking on this puppy. If I have my carriage bolt in there, it means you only have to do this with one wrench, which is good. So now we're adding the cool mud flap logo, stainless steel, and they give you a wrench with a hole in the middle, whatever this is called. It's kind of like a torch screw, but that special hole means you only can use that wrench. Probably so people don't take it? Something like that. That's what they do in toilets. They put those kind of screws on there. So I guess people steal things in toilets, but what do I know? Right, there we go. Okay, so there's three adjustments. We just put this one in, and I think the outside one, then we move the middle in. So I'm just tightening that up. It's got a carriage bolt, so it slides into place, and then you got a, a lock nut on the other side. So easy. Everything on this mud flap. The yoke arm loose, I can stick this rod in from the middle. Because that you got to, otherwise you got to take the other cap off, and you don't really want to do that. And I'll tighten one of these up so it doesn't flop on us. Now, take the mud flap, no, oh, and slide it on the pipe. Now, see if we can find that hole. So now we got this last carriage bolt to put in there and we'll tighten that puppy up. Carriage bolt in. I'm going to tighten that up and then we'll slide this in. I love having lock nuts on everything. Just makes me feel good. We'll loosen this up again. And line. That's the one it was I tightened. And I can slide this pipe in like the other one. Now, how's that look going down looking at the tire? I'm gonna twist that a little bit. Does that look okay? Watch these little plugs. They go in the end, so it looks all fancy. Fancy smancy. Oh, doesn't, doesn't that look cool? It's a good looking set of mud flaps. There you go. And there, now they're adjustable. A little bit of up and down. And we tighten that yoke up. You can take a little bit of that wobble out. It wobbles in your in my hitch. So yes, okay. that's what they're famous for. Okay. Let me tuck in my wires. Or does it sound funny? Uh, it it sounds good. Just okay. tuck in your wires. Okay. Now these mud flaps. They're made by cruisers. These are rock timber mud flaps. But see these here are the exhaust out lights. You, you cut a hole in here where your exhaust pipe is, even if you have dual exhaust, they come with two, and then you can let the exhaust flow right through there and not uh, try to burn up your rubber. But that's what that's for. They're a nice little stainless steel unit. And this one here, this, and I'll show you, this goes behind there. So you bolt it on the back side. You line that up with your exhaust and you bolt it on, and that way it takes the heat off the rubber mat. So you got more accessories there. But wait, there's more. Another accessory they have, they have these lights, one for each mud flap. And they go up on top of the mud flap, you plug them in. I don't know if you can zoom into that, but that's what they look like. They light up, isn't that cool? Another option for these rock tamers. So this is the Cruiser uh, license plate cover that I use, the barbed wire one, a diamond plate black one. 
We've got a Chevy one in here too. So we've got all the all these different accessories from Cruiser Accessories who own the Rock Tamer. Now let's go boogie down the road. <laughs> 